That's good. Welcome to part two of my daily iPad workflow. I'll go ahead and link to part one and everything else that I mentioned in this video in the description below. But in this part, we're gonna be talking about managing files, writing code on an iPad, managing websites, and actually how I use my iPad at my day job. So let's get into it. So first up, let's talk about files. Managing files or dealing with files is important on any computing platform. Now, modern computing platforms like the iPad and things like the Chromebooks manage files a lot differently than you know Windows 95 and classic Mac OS used to do. So my approach to them is a little different. I'm not saving files to my desktop or to a My Documents folder. I'm using a file sharing service. Now, I was using Dropbox for years Literally, I don't remember when I started using Dropbox. I just remember, hey, I had two gigs of free cloud storage space. This is amazing. And then like you did little things here and there and you got more space and what, I digress. I've stopped using Dropbox. Dropbox's support for the iPad just isn't good enough for what I need to do. I work from the iPad all day long, hence this whole series. I need something that is going to be reliable to manage my files. And I tried all the services out and I landed on iCloud. iCloud had the best reliability when it came to using the Files app. And the Files app is really important for anyone that works off the iPad. This is your Finder, Windows Explorer, whatever Linux has that I can't remember right now. This is how you manage your files. Now, there are other file providers out there that you can use. There's uh, Documents by Readl and a few other apps, uh, but the Files app is really baked into the OS. It's really cooked in there. So when you do save dialogues and things like that, it goes through the Files app. So you really want something that works well with the Files app. So I was paying for two terabytes of Dropbox space and two terabytes for iCloud space. I needed to have enough space to back up my iPad and iPhone and my photo library. And 500 gigs wasn't enough, so the next tier up was two terabytes. With Dropbox, you basically have free tier or two terabyte tier. Honestly, I kind of realized it was stupid that I was paying for both of these services. I don't need to be paying for both of them. And plus I had some files in iCloud because you know, the shortcuts folders there and sandboxing and things like that. So I was just like, let's just move everything from Dropbox to iCloud. It passed all my tests, it works. I'm happy with it. I do have one really minor complaint and it doesn't really affect the way I use iCloud it just bugs my level of organization. But right at the root of the iCloud drive has all those application folders. I really like the way Dropbox handles this by making an apps folder and then those go in that apps folder and then you can do other stuff with the root. Here it just feels messy. So how I got around this is making a files folder and then I just put that in the favorites. So I don't ever really tap on the iCloud button. I just go to the files folder under favorites. One of the big reasons why I didn't do this sooner is because I was waiting for folder sharing. It's not something I need a lot, but it's something I need often enough that it's a pain when I don't have it. And that was something Dropbox is really good at. Here's a folder full of documents, MP3 files, whatever. Share it with this person, that person has access, they can get those files, download them, do whatever they need to. Dropbox was really good at that. With iCloud, it's fine, it works. You can share a folder with somebody, they can download the files, they can get the files, they can add files back and forth. Great, that's the way it should work. I use the file sharing more than the folder sharing actually. In fact, I have a handy shortcut for this that will basically open the files app, allow you to browse through, and then just generate a link for that file and you can share it with whomever. The on my iPad section is pretty important as well. This is where apps like LumaFusion store all their data. Now we'll cover this in another part uh, that I'm gonna cover all the creativity apps and things that I use, uh, but LumaFusion is my video editor. And when creating these videos, they take up a lot of space. So I wanna make sure all those files are locally on my iPad so I don't have to do any weird syncing thing. I, I don't wanna deal with that. I just wanna make sure everything's locally on my iPad so I store it on the on my iPad section. I also do the same thing with my downloads. I keep them on the on my iPad section. This way they're not syncing up to some cloud service or I'm having to deal with any weird like, oh, hey, we're deleting them to save space even though you have a one terabyte iPad. You don't need to delete files, iCloud. Like it's fine to keep the files there. I have a one terabyte iPad for a reason. 
but I don't want to deal with that. So I have the downloads go there and I have my video projects go there. Also, uh, when I offload photos from my camera, I also put them there. But again, we'll talk about that in another part. Now, I also have a file server. Now, this isn't anything special. It's a PC with two terabytes of storage. I use this to back up projects that I'm not currently working on, uh, archive videos, basically just anything that I don't need to keep on my iPad because I'm not working on, but I don't want to delete it because, you know, it might be an old project or I might need a reference back to it later. Now, the reason why I got this file server is actually the fault of the iPad. One of my biggest complaints about working off the iPad is its backup system. The only way to do a backup on the iPad is to back up an image of the iPad through iCloud. There is no file and folder backups and iCloud's 30 day restore, that's not a true backup. That's a nicety, but not a true backup. So what I do is I copy all the files over to my file server that I need. So these could be video files like I'm recording right now, uh, podcast projects, whatever. I will copy them over to my file server and I have Backblaze running on my file server to back those up off site. So that way I have a copy on my iPad, a copy on my file server and a copy off site. I really wish I didn't need to do something like this. I would love to see some sort of like time machine backup for the iPad and maybe even Apple allow some sort of API that companies like Backblaze or CrashPlan or whoever could do offsite backups for an iPad. Now, Monday through Friday, I'm at my day job. I work in IT as a network admin. Now, I can't go into a lot of details on the specifics of what I do. I can't show my work essentially, but I can talk about the apps that I use and why. And I think this would be a good general purpose section for anyone that uses an iPad at work or wants to use an iPad at work. A big part of any IT job is doing documentation. Now we've tried a bunch of different services and just figuring out how we want to organize our documentation. And we ended up just doing a private GitHub repository. We already have one for something else that we'll talk about in a second, but it just works out well. I can get to it from anywhere and I can edit it really easily. And the benefit of our documentation already is it's just text files and markdown files. To work with GitHub and any Git repositories that we'll cover in a second, I use Working Copy. Working Copy is hands down the best Git client on iOS and iPad OS. So the way it works is I have all the repositories in Working Copy. Uh, you can do all the fetching, the pulling, the pushing, the committing, all the fun GitHub terms. But when I need to review a document, I can quickly pull it up through Working Copy. If I need to make a change to it, I can change it right there and commit the change. Or if I need to create a new document, I can create a new document right there in that repository through Working Copy. If you do anything with Git, GitHub, or any variation of that, I highly recommend looking into Working Copy. It's a great app and probably has one of my favorite icons on the App Store. Now, I have a couple of personal websites as well. Now, these are hosted with a service called Blot.im. What's cool about Blot.im is it's just text files, markdown files, and a few HTML files. Now, that's great for my needs. I don't need something as customizable as WordPress right now. I want something simple and easy to use. Now, the way Blot.im works is it syncs with a service for you to make changes. So you can have it either sync with Dropbox or Git. So you could probably figure out where I'm going with this. I used to have it sync with Dropbox, then I stopped using Dropbox, done with it, so now I'm having it sync with Git, and I'm making any changes to it through Working Copy. But what's cool about this is Working Copy has great shortcut support. So anytime I post a new video, I have a shortcut now that pulls from the RSS feed for my YouTube channel. All YouTube channels have an RSS feed. Uh, I pull the video, the title, the link, and even use regex to get the description of the video build a blog post out of it, and push it to my website through working copy, all from a shortcut. I don't have to do any copy or pasting or anything. All I do is when I run it, it asks me if this is the right video, I say okay, and it'll go through all its steps. Another big part of my job is writing code. This is where my last repository comes in. I have another repository that I keep separate from the documentation, specifically for scripts and code snippets and things like that. To manage these, I could just write everything in working copy, but I actually found where I like to write code is an app called Textastic. Textastic is an excellent code editor. Its syntax highlighting support is great. It supports a ton of languages. In fact, I haven't found a language that I need that it doesn't support. Though I don't write a ton of variations of code, so maybe there might be an abstract thing that it doesn't support. But the feature that set it over the top for me 
is the open in feature. So check this out. Working copy is a file provider, meaning it shows up in the files app with my repositories. So I can hit the open in button in Textastic, browse through my repositories, find the document, script, whatever that I need, open that up, make any changes, delete something, or I could even create a new one in Textastic as well, and then save the changes right back to working copy. And then in working copy, I have a shortcut that will do all the commits and push and notes and all that fun GitHub-y stuff. The other thing that Textastic does really well, and, and if you've ever written code on the iPad, this is probably really annoying. When you type on an iPad, it tries to auto-correct any misspelled words. Kind of a nice feature if you're somebody like me that just can't spell. But when writing code, it's not, usually you're not writing words that are from a dictionary. Usually there's, you know, something weird about it. So if you like that feature on the iPad and want to keep it on for when you're writing normal things like documentation, you can actually go into Textastic and turn it off just in that app. So you can write code without it trying to auto-correct it into a correct English or whatever language word. Textastic and Working Copy are apps I like to keep in Split View together. Not just because they complement each other, but they also work really well together in Split View. So like I was saying, I keep scripts, code snippets, documentation, a bunch of different things in these repositories. In Working Copy, you can drag and drop those files right into Textastic. They open in place, they don't make a copy or anything like that. So you can drag and drop them, edit them, make any changes, do whatever you need, save it, and then do all the pushing and committing. Now, when it comes to IT, a big part of it is controlling servers and computers remotely. So how I've been doing this is using an app called Jump Desktop. Jump Desktop is a remote desktop application, so you can access other computers from your iPad, whether it's Windows, PC, Linux, whatever. I have an admin server that I'll access through Jump Desktop this way. This is also how I interact with my file server as well. Through my admin server, I can connect to other computers or servers. I can use the Windows RSAT tools or PS session. Whatever needs to be done, I can make changes through that connection right there if I have to be connected to a Windows PC. A lot of my work doesn't necessarily need to happen. It happens through GUIs or code or GitHub, things like that. So this isn't something I have to do a lot of, but it is really nice to have. What's great about Jump Desktop is it supports the trackpad and mouse of the Magic Keyboard. It'll also support external mouse and keyboards as well. So if you have a fast enough internet connection, it's like you're sitting right in front of the computer. It has really good response time, decent graphics, so it's not looking all pixelated or anything. You can read what's on the other screen, and if you've ever used really bad remote desktop application, you know that can be a problem. It's a great app, like highly recommended if you ever need to remotely access a PC, Mac, Linux box, whatever, this is a great place to start. Okay, so I rarely use the Microsoft Office suite. It's just not something that I need for my day job. I would probably say I need Excel the most and on the iPad, it definitely excels. Sorry, sorry, won't happen again. But the Office suite is there. You have Word, you have PowerPoint, you have Excel. They're all there and they work fine. I'm not the most advanced Microsoft Office user. I have seen people with that can do things with Excel documents that I couldn't do with a whole code editor. But these applications are there. So if somebody sends me a Word document, I can open it on my iPad, I can edit it, I can make changes, I can create new Word documents, whatever I need. Same thing with PowerPoint and Excel, especially Excel, you can edit them right from an iPad. So if you work for a company that revolves around the Microsoft Office suite, don't worry, everything's there, it all works. I haven't found any features missing that I personally would need. It may not be 100% feature parity between the Windows version and the iPad version, but it's probably something really far off into the weeds that isn't there, that if you're just using the basics, uh, which I'm guessing 80 to 90% people are, you'll be fine. Now to use Microsoft Office on the iPad, you do have to have an Office 365 subscription. But if you work for a company that works 
in the office suite, chances are you probably already have a license assigned to you. So check with your IT people and they may be able to help you out. So that's it for part two. In part three, we're gonna be covering productivity, utility, and entertainment apps. So be sure to subscribe and let me know what you guys think about the series so far in the comments below. Like I mentioned, I'll put links to everything, including part one of this series in the description below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.